Hi, this is Steve Fryette, and welcome to Volume 4 of our Modeling Workshop. As in the previous installments, we're showcasing our new LX2 One Rack Space Power Amp. This is a tube power amp using 6L6s, and it operates at 40 watts a channel into 4, 8, or 16 ohms, and in bridge mono mode, putting out 85 watts into 2, 4, or 8 ohms. It also has a two-position switch that selects between FR, FR, that's full range flat response mode, and enhance mode, which is uh, somewhat emulating the voicing characteristics of our 252 and 292 power amplifiers. The modeler today is the Line 6 Pod Pro HD, um, graciously provided to us by Kevin Walt at Line 6. Uh, I gotta say, of all the companies that we contacted for reference, model, uh, reference units, loan units, um, the first one to arrive was the Pod Pro. And I think that speaks to the, uh, the interest that Line 6 is showing and what we've got going here and just keeping their pulse on, uh, keeping their finger on the pulse of the guitar industry in general. Line 6 has always been innovators in the field of modeling and they have uh, committed a lot of resources to it. They've got a large breadth of experience and a lot of resources to draw from. And they've done a, just an amazing job of producing uh, innovative products and making themselves accessible to a wide range of guitar players with affordable products. That's no small feat. So kudos to those guys for uh, you know, being of such assistance here with us. Um, I'm going to play through the Pod Pro a little bit and show you kind of the sound I've got set up. We're playing through the BGW right now for reference, and uh, this is what it sounds like. Now you probably uh, noticed if you've been watching any of the other uh, installments that this is a whole lot cleaner sound that we've been using. The previous ones have been crunchier and more overdriven and this is quite clean and open and we're using a uh, pretty basic clean uh, probably Fender amp model. We've got the speaker sims turned off as usual, the mic sim, uh, noise gates, effects, uh, and EQ all turned off so that we can just basically strip it down to the basic model. And to the credit of the Pod Pro, uh, the, the, the stripped down, completely dry, uh, straight amp model that's fairly clean is performing really well. Um, some of the other units like to have a little bit of grind in them before they start to get any sort of realism. And this is a, does a real decent job of sounding uh, full and real. Uh, at such a clean setting. So uh, that's a, quite an accomplishment. Um, the f foundation of modelers is based on the, the basically the entire legacy and history of all kinds of guitar playing from jazz to rock to blues and, and country and everything in between. Um, and uh, the, the creative output of players these days is built upon the legacy of past sounds and equipment. So the, the existence of modelers is really based on the existence of groundbreaking amplifiers of the past and the things that guitar players have done with them. There aren't new amplifiers coming out that are shocking people with their abilities. There's amplifiers like ours and many other companies that are being able to do more and more with tube technology and um, show more versatility and do quite a few things. But in the main, there isn't a situation where somebody's accidentally plugging a guitar into a speaker that's got a screwdriver hole punched into it and going, that sounds pretty cool, let's write a song about it, and making history. History is being made now by artists who are cutting and pasting bits and pieces of history and legacy together and creating new art forms. And uh, the the, the modeling technology is going to be playing a larger and larger role in that. And uh, so when we're thinking about and thinking where we fit in, 
how I believe we fit in is by bringing the realism and the dynamics of amplifiers, modern amplifiers of today and amplifiers of the past uh, to enhance the characteristics of modelers so that they become more viable uh, live performance instruments. And uh, that's where we come in with our legacy power amp designs and our new power amp designs and other new products that we can develop that can enhance the playing experience of digital modelers. Um, I'm going to play the uh, play into the BGW again a little bit, and then I'm going to flip over to the LX2 so you can hear uh, a little bit of that enhancement quality I'm talking about, and we'll discuss why that is. <laughs> Okay, as you probably noticed, like in the other videos, the sound got a little bit more air, it sounded a little bit more open at the extremities, and had a little bit more built-in mojo. Uh, these are the kinds of things that just don't translate well as a model. As far as tone shape and sort of amplifier character and some distortion characteristics and things like that, modelers do really well. When it comes to uh, power amp behavior, speaker response, harmonic balance, and playing dynamics, these are things that are a lot more difficult to model. And this is where uh, Friette comes in. Um, the, the whole idea of modeling companies recommending the FRFR uh, sort of concept, which is basically using a clean, flat, linear power amplifier, um, is based on the idea that everything that you need presumably is in the model. And therefore, uh, the power amplifier and the speaker system should stay out of the way. They should stay neutral. The problem with that theory is it doesn't produce a realistic playing experience and uh, the, the kind of dynamic feedback that guitar players are used to playing through tube amplifiers is, isn't necessarily there. And our goal is to find ways to bring that back. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to play the LX2 and I'm going to switch it to the enhanced mode and show you how that works. <laughs> Okay, so we've done a few of these demo videos with some of the other modelers and we've reviewed all of the uh, videos that we put up on YouTube. So I know what you can hear out there because I've heard it. And what I know you hear is that extra level of realism and spank and dynamics. What you don't feel that I feel in the room here is the actual uh, movement of the air and the feeling under my fingers of the, my fingers wanting to bounce off of the fretboard and bend the strings and dig in a little more and excite more of the performance out of the gear. That's just um, a natural result of having gear that interacts with you while you're playing. That player interaction is uh, available in limiters to, or I'm sorry, in uh, uh, modelers to a limited extent and even some of the more sophisticated ones that cost a little bit more money probably have ways to manipulate that, manipulate that even further. But in the main, uh, there's a limit to how much dynamic range you can eke out of that. And being able to enhance that dynamic uh, playing re response and harmonic balance uh, outside of the unit is what really helps take them to the next level. So now I'm going to turn off 
the enhance mode and I'm going to plug into the valvulator that's been quietly sitting up here just sort of making you curious why it's here. Why it's here is because it's a vacuum tube buffer. Normally its job is to isolate the guitar pickups from the effects of cable loading and pedal loading in your pedal board between your guitar and your amp. Uh, this is to restore the dynamics and it basically makes it feel like you're plugging your guitar straight into an amp even if you've got a sophisticated pedal board between the guitar and the amp. And so in, in a, this goes back to the restoration of the uh, playing dynamic and the, the, the organic feel of playing live. So uh, because the input stage of a modeler tends to suppress the dynamics, its primary function is to be a buffer between the guitar and then turning the signal into uh, uh, the analog uh, to digital conversion into the, into the digital domain. Uh, we're adding a tube stage that enhances that, that um, player dynamic without altering the tone quality. You won't hear a change in frequency response. Basically, you're just going to watch me sort of enjoy being able to have my fingers bounce off the fretboard a little more easily. So I'm going to play uh, back in, in FRFR mode on the power amp a little bit, and I'm going to turn the valvulator on, and then I'm going to turn it back off. Now we're back to flat mode. I'm turning the valvulator on. Like I said, you probably didn't hear much of a sonic difference, but what you may have noticed that I was getting a little bit more excitement out of playing because it was just easy and more fun to play. So now I'm going to um, work my way backwards. What we're going to do is I've got the valvulator on, I've got the LX2 in enhanced mode, and we're going to work backwards. We're going to play through the valvulator, then we're going to turn that off, we're going to turn, we're going to play uh, in the enhance mode and then turn that off and then we're going to go back to the BGW progressively listening to that <laughs> So now you heard me basically go back to the original FRFR environment and you can see how that, um, how that brings us back into more neutral territory, which is great for uh, you know, recording, writing, uh, recording direct, going to front of house and getting a wide variety of sounds, trying all kinds of gear and playing a lot with combinations of, of amps, effects, and cabinets, and, and EQ, and so on, which is all great. When it comes right down to performing, and this is what we're really trying to do here, is play guitar and perform and be inspired and write music and get people excited, at a certain point, it has to be recognized that the gear has to be exciting to play through, and as exciting as it is to be able to explore all the technological innovations of these pieces, it's even more exciting when you can get them to feel and respond like the amplifiers that you're used to. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, we've got one more installment, and then we're going to leave that as a little surprise as to what that's going to be. And uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.